my local recording. I can pause it now. So guess what, guys? You're going to be able to catch every little irritating thing that come out of my mouth. Oh, yeah. I hope this thing goes up from here because I got four Bitcoins say we do. Oops, four. I got four Bitcoins say we do. See, my four Bitcoin were entered down here somewhere. The bull went long. Let's see where did Big Bull go long at? Damn, I, I'm even lower than where Big Bull went long at. See, you can see where Big Bull went long right here. Here's the uh, but if I put it right here, kind of determine where that was at. Right here, bam. So I went, added some contracts on I got in at the low, low price of right here, 6443, 6443, right here. But I don't, I don't, I don't know if this is a solid, you know, upside potential. I don't, it's hard to, de to, to detect that at this moment because of the fact that we already like retracted from resistance like twice getting rejected right up here at the 6.5 like we were last night. We keep getting rejected at the 6,500. If we break through, though, we can probably get up above that EMA. If we get above the EMA, all right, we get above the EMA, false alarm, false alarm. <laughs> we're going to be feeling good. If we close any four-hour can, any four hour candle above this EMA right here, we can have some upside potential. But I don't really know if we have the guts. I don't know if the bulls. See, it's not just the bulls. It's the it's the shorts closing that makes it look like it's the bulls. So that's a little deceptive tack. That's a little deception that a lot of traders don't realize when they're trading. They think, oh, the, the fucking bulls are in town when there's green candles forming. When the bulls are not in town, I tend to trade with the. The uh, the motion in the ocean, so to speak. <clears throat> I try to, so that's why I'm looking at the long trade. Like, yeah, that's a pretty good trade. The shorts got to take profit sometime. They can't just keep holding their position. So I figured today's the day. And once one starts taking profit, the other one was like, oh, he's taking profit. Oh, he's taking profit. All the wells gonna start. You know, they're gonna, it's like it's like fear missing out effect still in reverse, inverse, inverse FOMO, inverse FOMO. Y'all heard it here first. Inverse FOMO. Inverse FOMO. Damn, that was a tongue twister. Fuck. I sound like a damn idiot again. Fuck! I can't never stop from sounding like an idiot. Every time I hear myself, I say, damn, I sound stupid. I don't know why that why that is. It's maybe because I can't pronounce my, my words properly. And when I do pronounce them properly, I still don't sound good to myself. I sound weird. Alright, enough of that. Psychological. What's going on here? EMA, that's what I'm looking at. All right, if you guys are always looking at me, looking at why, why does he look at this shit? Fucking bots in the, in the motion, that's why I'm looking at this shit. I'm hoping we go up to 6.9 or somewhere in between, like 6.8 and then then reject because I got a long position on own. That's the only reason why. And then this thing could come up here a little bit. This is stochastic, you know. It can, can actually come up here and then turn around where that where's that turnaround gonna be if it's in the middle like somewhere down here then we're fucking bearish fuck we're already above it here we're above it there um this candle is not has not yet closed i'm looking for the actual uh, numbers here where the fuck sometimes trading view will not give you your countdown Timer. So I'm, I'm gonna press int. I'm gonna press save, and this this is supposed to save every minute, but that doesn't happen all the time. I have been running this thing all night, so a refresh is due, and I'm still looking for my count my my countdown. So I gotta go pull it out. Is it scales countdown? God damn, it's there. Apply to all. That's a new. That's a new button. 
Hey, we, you guys see that new button? Look at that, apply to all. Oh, okay. I can dig it, I think. I don't know if I want to do that, but sure. Where the hell's my countdowner? Man, this is fucking bullshit. I can't get a countdown around this bitch. I'm looking at Coinbase. Wow. Right, let's get the fuck out of here. Excuse my language. I'm up. I'm up. I'm up. I am up. I'm telling you. All right, Gemini. Let's go look at Gemini. Bullish. Inverse bullishness going on here. All right. That's really inverse bearishness. I'm sorry. Inverse bearishness going on. I'm not going to call out bullish. I'm going to say that's inverse bearishness going on. <laughs> you guys heard it here first, man. You heard it here first. Don't give me my damn credits. I need them. I need all my credits. You guys know I got bad credit, man. Come on, man. I'm black. I got bad credit. I need better credit. <laughs> Fucked up credit. God damn. My credit's fucked. <laughs> all around it just general credit credibility is just fucked thank you good looking all right look I found ways around that i found ways around that so look up uh, inverse bearishness man that's what this is all right so um I'm looking for my damn um bit for next. That's what I'm looking for. Let's just use the arrow keys. Did you guys know that? Uh, let's go faster that way. So I can move my mouse around. And it's like playing video games, you know what I'm saying? If you can't do multi like you gotta be able to at least do four things at once sometimes. And talk. And trade and code. And flip through all the exchanges. There goes bit for next. Oh yeah, bit next. Come here, baby. You looking kinda like the wrong damn TA chart. Important resistance lines. That's the, the best of it right here. Um, okay, so maybe it was a bit stamp. Let me see. Alright, there it is. That's what I'm looking for right there. Bit stamp. Here he is. Look at that wedge. That's the oh that's the mega wedge right there. I call that the mega wedge of consolidation. And the point of no return lies right about right here. Okay. I don't know why this thing is extended. But anyways, so we came up. I had to brighten this line up. This line been here. And this is the one that threw a lot of traders off. Bottom wedge. You think this bottom wedge. I don't know what the hell to call this. This is a widening channel or something like that. I don't know. Man. Weird. It's weird, but it seems to be uh Fucking holding up. It's being respected. Put it that way. It's being respected, guys. That means the the real deal holy fields are, are looking at it and trading off of it. And here's DMA. That's what I wanted to see. Where the fuck is that EMA going? When we get above it, can we close the candle above this EMA? That's all we need to get a reversal in my mind in to the upside. But the longer we take and the more that these things start crossing above us. This EMA is going to start crossing, like this blue one crossing, this purple one here. Oh, God. So scared. I'm thinking about taking my, my trade off, really, though. And then this blue one, and then this blue one start crossing this green one. Then, I mean, then things are just really... First off, the green one already crossed the purple one. So that means it's, it's the leader. So the last one that has crossed is already crossed. This is the uh, any other crosses happening unless they're going in reverse. So this, this yellow one, we have to start seeing if we get any candles closing above it. This could be our day. <laughs> and that's why I am in that, keeping this long long. Till otherwise. Three hundred. I'm just looking at some stuff. Uh, live. I'm doing. I'm recording this too. This is a, a side note. I'm gonna pause this throughout the day before I pu I'll, pub I'll publish this at the end of the day, maybe. 
maybe sooner, maybe later. I don't know if people really use this information, but you should be able to use this if you're using Bitbull. This is used in conjunction with Bitbull, so you can know. I mean, what you want to do, you know, and and I don't know fundamental. I don't really look at fundamentals. I tell you the truth, I like to know what's going on though, but. I don't trade based on news. I don't do none of that dumb shit like everybody else dumb asses do. That's why they, they lose money. I trade based on price, price only. Okay, and what does price do when it when it's at this price? And if it's that price, what is it doing? Is it going up, down? How fast is it? Stuff like that. I look at that type of shit. My bot does too, by the way. I don't know if you guys know that, but you should. If if you see anything, you've learned anything by the by the thumbnail of my video, the bot is me basically. That's why I got the picture of the, the man's face right there. And the computer chips in his head, you know what I'm saying? He's like he's booing shit and his computer chips is right there. It's like that's the bot. The bot is 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 the strategy is in the bot. I'm inside the bot. You know what I'm saying? The bot's not inside of me. I'm inside the bot. All right. That's the whole. That's the whole rationale behind this bot. Just so you guys know. I don't know if you guys really know or even fucking care, but hey, somebody must give a fuck. Must care. I, I care. All right. So look, <clears throat> that's enough from me. I want to pause this. Uh, this 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 little talk. I'm gonna pause it and uh, you guys take care out there. Let's just see how how this unfolds. I'm gonna be pausing this, and this is me talking to the side note side of the video, and this is also me talking to the uh, the live feed, okay? Which I'm pretty sure you can catch this live, and then I'm also recording my my discourse and my uh, my my, my comment. My commentary, okay. I want to record that on the side. Pause recording, okay. And when there's a trade to happen, I'm gonna unpause it. It's gonna be so live, man. I'm like, I feel like I'm the first one doing this shit, man. I feel, I feel awesome. I hope you guys feel awesome too, man. Have a good Friday, okay. Crypto never sleeps. Every time the weekend comes, I start saying that shit. Crypto never sleeps. All right, be good. All right, I'm back. I had to. Tell you guys I forgot to say something. Let's go back over here real quick. Got my little pop up here. Um, countdown. It basically says uh, right here. Uh, it says uh, three hours and thirteen minutes. Four-hour candle closes. So wherever this candle closes is going to determine where the hell whether we confirm if we can close above this yo EMA. I'm gonna be like, yeah, we got some. But for right now, this is a rejection area right here, and this is still going to be looked at as rejection until then. But I figure they got to take profit, and then the stochastic is up to the upside. So. We could start seeing, like right here, you never see what happened previously when the price reached the EMA and closed the, a four hour above it. And then there's a resistance line right above it. Okay. You guys see what happened? Look, check it out. And then there was a cross right here. And then explosion to the downside, even though the EMA was up. I mean, even though the stochastic was heading up. See? Like over here, it's heading up. Okay. We could start closing above it. And this is where I'm typically looking for Bit Bull to get out of the short. I mean, to get out of the long. Or reverse, okay? Right around that area there. Right around that area here, which is around 5,066, 6630, 6640, 6550. Watching this all day. That's all I'm saying. All right, so I'm going to got three hours to look at and then I'll be doing some other things all right so I'm gonna be pause the uh, what is this called the uh, side note and once again enjoy your Friday it's Friday the 10th August 10th Keep time
There we go. West Coast time in LA, Las Vegas. This time. Pause. I know you guys are looking at this money flow. I would tell you where to find this, but I can't remember right now. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna post some links. Money flow is pretty interesting. Um. Who the hell did this? Uh, Carlos Santos, Money Flow Oscillator. Train View Script, Money Flow Oscillator right here. I'm going to just copy this directly out of here. And then I'm going to show you guys what I'm using. I saw, I'm going to post this in the link in the, this link in the description to the video. Actually, I want to put it in my Discord group. Black box. Right. And um, we're gonna go here, and the defaults for this down damn thing is not what what they should be. It should be like this. So. Indicator, okay, created by uh, Ricardo Santos, Money Flow Oscillator, man, it's great. I put the in correct inputs in for Bitpool, all right, and I'm also posting that in the black box, all right, so you guys know what to set it to, where to find it, okay, and uh, all right, that's Bitstamp, Kraken, Coinbase, and this one is the BitMEX contract where we actually trade, where the most Bitcoin volume is in the world, about four billion dollars a day, and uh, last, you know, they just hit another million million uh, Bitcoin yesterday, and then um, here's the uh, the futures contract for September from BitMEX. All right. They got the uh, Aggregated uh, length, which is 20 for these three, and then 20. Each of these can be set differently. So let's just, no, that's probably what's at the top of here. I don't really, let's go get to these purple lines. You see, this is the uh, money flow three, the zero line, got a zero line. It's up there. <laughs> be careful. You got to know where the money line is, all right? That's really how you look at this. So I'm going to, I'm going to take the, the, the line. I want, I want some, damn, I can't set it to like, uh, Dotted lines, you know. Mm. No dotted line in here. Bring it all the way over, all right. That's that's how you can determine where the where the zero line is at. That's a good way. Okay. Fill it out. So much needed to be that bright. Zero line, okay. Got to know where the zero line is because money is negative money in the market right now. That's basically what's the you know. If you guys know how to do money flow. You guys can look it up on Investopedia if you don't know, okay? I'm not going to try to educate you. This is not what this is. You should probably be able to find that information out easy and how to read this. This is this is the aggregated money flow oscillator. Thanks, programmer. This guy right here, Ricardo Santos. Man, normally you can only get one of these money flows. Now we got money flow from four different, five different exchanges. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Now look. See the money leaving the market since when? Since this day, which was the 18th. All right? Came in and it left. Alright. Right here. Press auto so I can see where that was. Right here. It started leaving right here when it went up. That's funny, right? Isn't that funny? Don't doesn't that look weird? Like, it was leaving the market when we were going up, and no one else called it. I didn't call it. That's why I did that. When I saw this, I was like, oh, shit. I got to start using this fucking indicator. Because I could have, I could have, oh, well, my, 
my technical analysis is so fucking powerful. I already seen the return coming. I didn't need the money flow. But it's still good for people to really like grasp what's happening as it's happening. Like if the fucking this is a the best divergence indicator, this beats RSI. All right. For divergence purposes. If you want to see what divergence is, here's a fucking prime example of what real divergence in the market is. When money is leaving the market, okay, exiting all five exchanges at the same damn time, right here, okay? Okay, the zero line is right here. We're down here now. Money's leaving. This is starting to curve up too, so money's going back in. So look, right here, let me, let me, let me get rid of this technical analysis, this chart art. Right. We're down here. We went up here as money was leaving. So that should tell you, like, who's ever the short, the, the people that are, that are short, they're the ones that run the market. The people that make that, that are making the market, they are the smartest fucking traders in the game, okay? I'm telling you, and I'm following these motherfuckers. Every footstep they take, I'm looking, I'm like, these motherfuckers are so smart, man. I don't know. I've, I've never seen trading at this part on, on this. Like, they try to tell you go to crypto to trade, and then it's a bunch of newbies there that don't know what they're doing. That's bullshit. These motherfuckers, they are some expert traders. These motherfuckers right here that did this, I'm not just looking at this. I'm looking at other things I saw yesterday night when I went to sleep that made my big bull go long. I'm looking at that shit, too. I'm going to talk about that. I don't want to. But man, Lord have mercy. Look, look at the divergence between these two things. I know some noobs in here are like, what the fuck? Show me the divergence. Show me what the fuck you're talking about. So let me show you what I'm talking about. From the show me state. Whatever where's the show me state? I always wanna know. As I started saying that, I started saying the show me state stuff. Look, 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 look. I have the goddamn fucking Hide all drawing tools, favorite tool ball. There we go. It's up here now. Grab the damn trend line. See, I have to talk myself through this stuff sometimes. All right, here's a divergence. Here, here. All right, and then from here, look at the steepness of that shit. God damn, how do you make money go out the market and price still go up? Just imagine second if you will the money really came out the market from here to here All right then they popped it up here notice the pop right here pop never reaching this so no, never reaching this part right here so they were able to fucking make it go up maybe this was the weekend the 24th when was it there on 24th Said the volume is so thin on the on the weekends. You can make it. Yeah, that was Sunday, the 24th. Looking at that right. 5 24th. No, I'm not. No, that was Tuesday, so yeah. That on Tuesday, buddy boy. Popped it up. Basically, diverges from here to here. The top of this and the top of this is higher. And then they were like, yo, man, I'm selling. I made money on this pop. The money flow indicator, baby. All right. Irrefutable, okay? Irrefutable. All right, that's all I want to say. That's all I wanted to get out. All right. I'm going to pause the local recording, which is the side note. Take care. You want to see a bigger picture of that money flow? Damn. I do believe I did show you guys it's up close. I don't really remember, but if I didn't, here it is again. Zero line. Turn that on so we can really see where that zero line is at. Oh, three and then folks. Three of these together. MFO2. That is that uh, Bitmex. 
the contract that we actually trade with the most volume. And the color is M. That pink is a and not a good pink. Close to this pink. Take this one and turn this one dark blue. Alright. Save these as a save as default. Alright, so I can determine where that's at. This is where our nice place of uh, business. And then this is the aggregated index of the three. One bigger than the other. Color. I can see where it's at. There it is. It's right there. Damn September contract right here. Flat out. Flat. I don't like that shit. I'm going to remove this soon and save as default for now. Well, you guys know this is the, the September contract right here. Purple one. And these three together, this stamp, Kraken, and Coinbase together, okay, are the uh, orange one. All right. The September contract looks like it's shit. It's just flatlining as at zero straight zero. So this is not doing us any good. I can replace this with something better. If I do it now, I'll be looking really good. Let's try this Japanese uh, bit flyer. Let's see what happens with that. Let's, it's money flow. So Japanese index down here on a blue. BTC and JPY. JPY. Select the yen, bit flyer, uh, Bitfinex, but I don't like Bitfinex data. I don't trust their fucking asses at all. Damn, that purple blue line shit looks retarded. I don't know why this is, why it's looking like that. I can't get any real data from these places for for uh, for the uh, let's try a different contract just to see if this is a function of the MFO three malfunction a malfunction of it at to be back. let's try uh let's try binance usdt looking like the blue line is like whatever this is I'll probably have to go in there and fix this up uh, programming shit this is probably just blue, like fucking up shit it's just looking like it's not programmed right in there what it looks like to me so um, that's definitely a voters problem I'll, I'll, I'll look into that a little bit deeper and then probably publish a, a different version of this all right so until then, just use this as it is uh, if you want to. Uh, all right, so, yeah, there it is. All right, cool. Pause. The peasant class had actually established, and by the time the Soviet re Revolution came around, which would be uh, at, at the latter part of the 1910s, after the First World War, the peasant class had actually established farms, of course, varying productivity. Some of the peasant farmers were very, very good at being farmers and produced a huge proportion of Russia's and the Ukraine's food. Uh, because one of the things, we'll talk about this later as the class progresses, one of the things that you'll find if, the, if you look at creative production in any domain, it doesn't matter, artistic domain, food production, um, novels written, novels sold, money generated, number of companies generated, um, number of goals scored in hockey, Etc. Any, any or no, number of paintings painted, number of compositions written, anything like that, where where the fundamental underlying measure is human productivity. What you find is that a very tiny percentage of people produce almost all the output. It's called a Pareto distribution, P-A-R-E-T-O, and it was studied in detail in scientific productivity by someone named Desola Price, 
It's a square root law, so here's the law fundamentally. If you look at the number of people who are doing, who are, who are in a given domain, who are producing in a given domain, the square root of the people produce half the product. So that means if you have 10 employees, three of them do half the work, but if you have 10,000 employees, 100 of them do half the work. Right, it's a very, very vicious statistic. And you won't learn about that in psychology for reasons I have no idea about because you learn about the normal distribution and not the Pareto distribution. But Pareto distributions govern, for example, the distribution of money, which is why 1% of the people in the general population have the overwhelming amount of money, and one-tenth of that 1% has almost all of that. Right? So I think it's like the richest 100 people in the world have as much money as the bottom 2.5 billion. And you think, well, that's a terrible thing, and perhaps it is, but what you have to understand is that that law governs the distribution of creative production across all creative domains, right? It's something like a natural law, and we can, we'll talk about that more, but imagine what happens when you play Monopoly. You've all played Monopoly. What happens when you play Monopoly? One person ends up with all the money, all right? Then you play another game of Monopoly. What happens? One person ends up with all the money. It's actually the inevitable consequence of multiple trades that are conducted randomly. So if you take a thousand people and you get them to play a trading game, you, get, you each give them a hundred dollars, say, or ten dollars, and they have to trade with another person by flipping a coin. I, I win the coin toss, you give me a dollar, you win, I give you a dollar. If we all play that long enough, one person will end up with all the money and everyone else will end up with zero. So it's a deeply built feature of systems of creative production and no one really knows what to do about it because of course the danger is is that all the resources get funneled to a tiny minority of people at the top and a huge section of the population stacks up at zero but to blame that on the oppressive nature of a given system is to radically underestimate the complexity of the problem no one actually knows how to effectively shovel resources from the minority that that controls almost everything to the majority that has almost nothing in any consistent way because as you shovel money down it tends to move right back up and it's a big problem anyways the reason I'm telling you about that is because after the peasants were, were granted their land and started to become farmers a tiny minority of them became extremely successful and those people produced almost all of the food for Russia and, and Ukraine so what happened in the 1920s when bloody Lenin came along and collectivized the farms was that they defined the kulaks who were these tiny minority of successful farmers who maybe had a brick house and were able to hire a couple of people and had some land and some livestock and were very, very productive people they defined them as socially unfriendly elements and they sent groups of intellectuals out into the towns to collectivize the farms and so the idea was that while well, you would pool your land and and everyone would farm it collectively and the land was taken away, of course, from the tiny minority of people who were actually productive and had actually managed to own much of the land. So you have to imagine how that would occur. Okay, so it's in the 1920s. It's after, the world, after World War I. Russia's in pretty bad shape. The villages are full of brutalized men who have post-traumatic stress disorder and lots of people who are not doing well at all. And the bloody intellectuals come into the town and they say, you know those successful farmers up the street that you've always been pretty jealous about in your useless manner? Well, they're actually pigs and demons who are stealing from you, so why don't you come out, we'll form a nice little mob and we'll take everything they've got. And that's exactly what happened. And all those people were killed or raped or set off to Siberia in the middle of the bloody winter where there wasn't even anything for them to, to anywhere for them to live or anything for them to eat. So they all died. And then the consequence of that was a few years later, six million people starved to death in the Ukraine. And Malcolm Muggeridge had been reporting on that since the 1930s. And so that was the, that was the first wind, really, that the West got of exactly what was happening in the Soviet Union. But even at that point, the bloody left-wing intellectuals in North America were so damn clueless and in Europe that they never paid much attention to it, with, with the exception of a certain number of people like George Orwell, who wrote 1984 and, and, uh, and uh, Animal Farm, which is, of course, a discussion. The main pig in Animal Farm is Stalin, of course, and it's a story, an allegory about the Russian Revolution, whose basic motif is, we're all equal, but of course some... All animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. And that's the motif, that's the motif of animal farms. So there had been warnings all the way through, right from the beginning of the Russian Revolution, to the West about exactly what was going on. But because 
communist and Marxist ideology is very good at addling the, at the weak minds of idiot intellectuals, there was a huge section of the population who was fomenting, I suppose, against the standard, what would you call it, political, psychological, and social order, who were, were absolutely committed to you know, the ethic that's encased in statements like, from each according to his ability, to each according to his need which sounds perfectly wonderful if you think about it for about 15 seconds, but if you think about it for six months, becomes unbelievably murderous in its reach and, and, and intent. Okay, guys, chew on that for a while, okay, because that was powerful. I'm trying to dis dis decide. I've been looking for that Pareto distribution for a long time. I didn't understand what I knew. What he was, Dr. Peterson is a see. He's a clinical psychologist, so everything he does is clinically based. Everything he talks about has already been proven, or he doesn't talk about it. He doesn't even. He'll tell you if it's not been proven, if it's just theory, and he'll tell you, you know. So most of the shit that he's on is clinically based. All right, not even biased, okay? It's just like existentialism at its finest in psychology, okay? Social psychology, uh, uh, biological, biochemical, okay? Psychology as well, because all of that stuff is actually based in the way that our, uh, we're, we're structured and everything is bifurcated. Okay, so anyway, I'm not going to get into that discussion. I'm, I just wanted to share that with you guys and plant that in my channel because that has to, I have to, I've been looking for what the hell is a Pareto distribution. I've been looking for that. I'm like, damn, finally I figured out what it was and I locked on some of the videos that I've actually, they were excerpts of the things I heard him talking about in way longer lectures than that. All right, so just so you know, and I didn't know what the hell he was saying. Every time he said Pareto, I didn't know. I was looking like, how do you spell that? Now I finally figured out how to spell it. And I find, I find individual pullouts and highlights, highlight reels of him discussing the Pareto distributions, which is interesting. But he's, he hasn't really got into why that ties up. A lot of the things that happened with the Germans and how they all died and, you know, because of the uh, socialism or with the, the communism it tries to take away the Pareto, the natural law of things, which is a, a hierarchy. And that basically causes a lot of problems, you know, that result in millions of people dying every single time they try to enact it. And that uh, can't undo a natural law, okay? So it's just the way it is. I need to dwell on that because in the markets, I believe it could tie into the market somehow, but I don't know. I haven't done my research. Will do.
had to unpause this moment. Check this out. Sell off. So everybody was like, yeah, we're going up. But they used it as a, a way to say we're going down. But could this be a shakeout? I often look for shakeouts. I'm not willing to take this position off until I see this thing further to the downside. We could start buying at any moment, shaking out. Because this is this is BitMEX, and they got to get out of, uh, you know, people that went long up here, when you start seeing the liquidations, tend to flip around and go the opposite direction. They're trying to hit people's stop losses right down here somewhere, I believe. Going on right now, and then we're going to turn around and go up. So the people who are over leveraged is basically, you know, I, I'm surprised I haven't seen nobody get liquidated yet. So I don't think anyone, anyone is over leveraged. I mean, I under, oh yeah, over leveraged. Yeah, I, it's like, damn, where's the liquidations? And then sometimes I cover it up over here. You know, sometimes they'll be covered up over here, but they shouldn't be. How many people we got trading? Got 8,000 bots, 23,000 normal people. Bots are going up. Everybody want to connect their bot over here like me. They see me doing it. They want to do it. They think it's easy to make a bot that's actually profitable. Not even close, buddy. Not close, buddy. Not even close, buddy. I'm not going to look at this as a reversal from where what, we just fucking went up, right? And then it's like, damn, what, what is it, a shakeout or something? Maybe it's not. Maybe we are heading down, man, and I will take this position off. I didn't like this long position Big Bull put on in the first place, but it, it put it on because what's doing is they're fooling they're fooling the shit out of my bot and they're fooling the shit out of everybody else's bot. And I'm aware of this already, so it's not like I'm not, I'm not aware. I've been I've been building bots for a while. It's interesting to see them at play. Shake out, shake out stop loss uh, you know they got to get the price down somewhere so you can be like oh we're going out of the way oh no and then we're not we're actually going the way you thought we were going but you're so you know you're scared to take a loss which you can't do you can't trade and, and be scared to take a loss that's pretty much that's gonna fuck you up a stop loss have you ever noticed in the back test when as soon as you enable a stop loss you, all your profits disappear <laughs> The back test is, is evidence of a stop loss failure. What a stop loss can fucking bring to you. But you can, you're supposed to use a stop loss, but it's not a security. It's for like for runaway markets. Like say if you're on the wrong side of the trend, and all of a sudden Trump announces that we're going to start using Bitcoin, and you're short. Everybody just starts buying Bitcoin. You, know, you need a stop loss some shit like that you know what i'm saying because it but you don't need to be using it for like a zero stop loss. as soon as the price goes the wrong direction after you put your trade in i mean you can but you gotta be damn good you gotta know your direction it's good to trade like that too but if that's manual trade i don't think that's going to work on the strategy but i've built strategies based on that effect right there like like scalpy Damn, this thing's going even further low. Where do they come from? I, when I look at these these shorters, I'll be like, God, where the fuck do they come from? And I'm all I can think of Satoshi Nakamoto. Yeah. Those are the big Bitcoin holders. I can think of. I don't. I don't know who the fuck else it could be. They missed their chance to sell at the top, and now it's like, well, I'll just take what I can get. But if you were smart, you would hold it because we're going. You gotta, you gotta retest the top. You're gonna retest it. But a person that doesn't trade doesn't know that, so they, they, they got weak hands. You gotta eventually go back to two thousand, twelve, twenty thousand dollars. Got to. There's no way around it. Especially when people are buying right here at sixty-four thousand dollars, <laughs> they gonna sell less than sixty-four thousand? You crazy as a motherfucker! That is not gonna fucking happen. Anybody buying at six thousand is not selling under six thousand. These are the fucking people aware of Bitcoin right now. They waiting for this shit to hit twenty thousand, Jack. Anybody buying at six thousand is smart money. People that are selling at six thousand is Dumb money. 
I'm not doing either because I don't have long-term investment goals like that, but I'm a short-term trader as of right now, like leverage. I'm like Jesse Livermore. Leverage is the fucking live by leverage, die by leverage. You know what I'm saying? Right now, I get some money. I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not a fucking rich person. If I had like, you know, millions of dollars, I would definitely, I would definitely be buying hella Bitcoin at 6,000 and holding it, locking it up in a vault somewhere. Fuck yeah. That's what I would fucking be doing. Rothschilds? Maybe they're scared of Bitcoin because right? they already got money. So it's like, why would I take all my money and buy Bitcoin? I don't know what the Rothschilds are thinking about Bitcoin, but I can tell you that if they run in the banks, obviously they saying, fuck that Bitcoin shit. Short that shit. Then buy it all up. I don't know. I don't know what they think. That's probably not what they think. That's a good idea. I like to think that idea. <laughs> but you can't. It's too late to short it and then buy it all up. You can't have all the Bitcoin. If you try to buy all the Bitcoin and then only to sell it, right? Who's going to buy it? So you still have the same problem. You're going to buy it all and then who are you going to sell it to? fucking lose money because you done bought that shit at 6000 and now you're trying to you got all of it you're trying to sell it to somebody who doesn't have it for what for how much money price out you got the supply price goes down you got to sell it for one dollar now idiots so they're staying out the market they're not dumb off childs are not dumb oh yeah let me mute this The Rothschild family. How short can we short? I'm $33 in the hole. I'm $25 in the hole. I don't let go. <laughs> uh, it would have been nice to take profit up here, then come back down there and, and buy back again. But who knew that was going to happen? I definitely didn't know this was going to happen. So I'm not, I don't play on things that I don't know what's going to happen. I just hold my position until things really change and then I might have to I still think I'm still pre playing on the premise that we're going to take profit shorts taking profit which is inverse bearishness alright alright I'm holding that I'm still in that even though we're going down like where's the point of like you know resistance going to be where's the point of support is this going to be support right here if it doesn't hold support, we're going down. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for it to either hold support. Right now, I'm not. I'm not worried. I'm only like break even right now, okay? And I got four bitcoins saying I'm. I know what the fuck I'm doing. All right, right here. All right, there we go. I'm gonna mute this now. I gotta go tend to my children for a quick second. But this should. Well, I'm not gonna tell you what it should do, but I'm looking forward. And hoping, now nah, I'm not going to say hope. Hope is not a good word, but I want this to uh, turn into support right here. I don't want it to break. But that's evident because I have a long position on right here. And I don't think millionaires, billionaires are not buying Bitcoin at 6400 Are they? Like I said, I would. So if I would, I, I, t I tend to think they would. See what I'm trying to say? That's why. I, that's how I trade psychologically. Trading psychology plays a big role in trading. But you can see that in the charts based on past price locations. Okay, when we visited the price back, you know, at six thousand four hundred. Guess what happened? People were buying right there. Who do you think is buying right there? They're not fucking, you know, it, I don't think that has a lot to do with putting on leverage positions as far as when you buy a Bitcoin. I think shorting Bitcoin has a lot to do with leverage. Okay, that's what I think. So when you see buying, I, I typically say that's someone actually putting money into the market. I'm also looking at the money flow indicator and then we're curving up right now. So look at that too. Even though the market is, even though this could be going down, if money flow is going up and this is going down, I mean money's entering the market. All right. 
and we're going to be seeing higher move price movements. So I'm going to stick and hold my ground on this position until we break through some prior shit like this one right here, like 6423. I got to really come down past there, man. Come on. Do it. They could be shorting the shit out of this, and people could be just buying right now. You know what I'm trying to say? Your shorts are going to lose you money because you got to cover now at a higher price. You're going to be buying it. But it's interesting to see this shit go down. Even though I know we're going down, it's just like, I know it's bears doing this shit. So when do they, like, where do they actually take their profit and how high up can we go back up before we come back down again is the real question. I don't really know, but it's it's like whoa! Look at that selling. Is it moving the price? I don't know, cause this is this is cracking. Four thirty-four. Uh, I'm sorry, four thirty. Four twenty-five. Four twenty-five. Yeah, four twenty. Uh, you guys didn't do a good job there. Oh, y'all fucking suck. What happened with the bears there? They lost control, man. Bulls. I don't know. Those could be bears still buying, taking profit, covering. All right. You see how I inverted? I inverted that. Selling right here. I could be bulls down here, selling up here. <laughs> Got long up here. Now they're selling up here. Where people? <laughs> they all making money. Everybody's making money, okay? In that scenario. Only people that ain't making money are the people that sold down here to the people that bought down here. And the people that are selling right here and the people that are buying right here, like right here, I bought down here. So I bought down here at this Definitely looking for buyers to buy where I buy. I typically would, I, I mean, this is like, to me, this is a place that my my big bull basically told me, hey, buy right here, man. This is not a place to sell. I thought it was a place to sell, but after looking at all the people trading at this zone right here this is a place to buy and that's why i flipped around now i'm buying right here okay just so you guys know there we go i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna pause this recording all right hey you guys notice that shit every time they start selling they start buying like it's crazy it's like they're they're popping up, buying, and whatever, whoever, sell, whoever's selling right here, they're covering for the shorts that just shorted the market, and they're all, like, getting covered right here at this area right here. And I'm like, fuck, these people keep selling right into the motherfuckers that just sold everything. So they're buying right at this point right here, no matter what, so they don't drive the market back up. They keep buying at this point right here, but, which makes no sense to me. I mean, I would have, I would have... Bought it back lower, you know what I mean? So it's kind of it's kind of strange to see. But maybe they like to take profit all at one point. You know what I mean? It's it's kind of like what I've been noticing. Yeah, that's exactly what I've been noticing. So I don't think it's going any further down than this. Like I said, I would buy Bitcoin right here. Like physical Bitcoin, not leverage Bitcoin. Something that looks like it's uh, pretty much planned. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see it go lower because I'm waiting to see if it goes lower. I'm like, maybe it won't. But I'm like, damn, are they going to take profit? I mean, look, they are taking profit. They're just not driving the market back up taking profits, which is probably what they're doing. So they would rather stay right here than for it to go all the way back up, which is kind of odd because, I don't know, it's kind of like, do I really know what I'm talking about?
I cannot. Let's see. That was another order for uh, Scalpy. They like Scalpy. Yeah, that's my uh, black box strategy. I kept that like under the radar. Yeah, I didn't know about this deleveraging, this compound deleveraging bot that I built. Y'all don't know about that shit, yo. I never even went live with that. I have to see them sell off now. Let's see. I said, I think they're going to buy it back up. It's just weird to see them try to sell off. And then I think the sell off is coming from other entity. I don't know who it is, but they're trying to sell. And then they got these guys trying to buy big shots too. These people that are buying right here, they're like loading them up. I'm just sitting here watching them load up. Like every time they try to initiate like a sell off, like they're buying up right here. It's crazy. And I watched another guy's channel. And he was like, yeah, no, no. They're going to wait till they kind of go to like 5,000 before they buy. And I'm like, uh, I would buy at 6,000 if I was like a million dollars strong. I would definitely buy a bunch of Bitcoin at 6,500 and below. <laughs> Anything below that, I'm getting it. I'm, I'm, I'm picking that shit up. So it's no wonder I see this happening. I'm just thinking about psychologically, you know. I could be wrong. I mean, of course you want to buy Bitcoin cheaper, but if this guy doesn't let it go down that low, no one's going to get it. So all those people that are waiting to buy it at 5000 probably not going to get it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's crazy as it sounds, but that's what's happening. All right, I'm done talking. Pause. Wait, 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 I got something else to say. Maybe I, because this is the, uh, the the highlight of the live stream for today. Pausing and unpausing. I just wanted to say, maybe I should let it play a little bit. Just a little bit, so you can see me prove a point that I'm making. Uh, leaves me, but I, it certainly looks like that's what's going on. It's a fishy order flow going on. Like, everybody's trying to sell their shit right now. They're scared. But y'all are selling it to the hands of the person who probably people who basically sold the market down to make you think it's going down further so you can sell your coins. Boy, did they do a good job of that shit. I'm not joking with you guys. I'm looking at them buy this shit up every time they dump. Every time they dump. Watch what I tell you. Watch what I tell you. Look, they're dumping like a motherfucker. Like, I look, dump, 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 dump. And then it's like, oh, okay, thank you. I'll pick that up. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know who's dumping right there. I feel like those are the retailers. Oh, my God. This shit is fucking crazy, man. Oh, my fucking God. I feel so sorry for these people, man. Damn, they have no clue. They're all selling their coins right now. Damn. All right, I'm just meet this man. Crazy dude.